This is the Skoda Karok. It's a super sensible family SUV that provides dependable family transport and low running costs, but not that much in the way of upmarket bling. Since the Karok first arrived in 2017, Skoda has made various upgrades and updates to it. And today's model is sporting slightly slimmer headlights and taillights. Other than that, it's still the same. What you see is what you get family SUV. It comes with a variety of petrol and diesel engines, six-speed manual or seven-speed automatic gearbox, and four-wheel drive is available on all but the base models. Realistically though, unless you regularly find yourself in muddy fields, we'd stick with the more efficient two-wheel drive version. What you don't get, and this is a bit unusual these days, is any form of hybrid option. If that matters to you, then something like a Kia Sportage or a Hyundai Tucson will be much more up your street. Meanwhile, the Karok that we've got here is the 150 horsepower, 1.5 TSI petrol in front wheel drive and has a manual gearbox. The boot is important in this type of car and the Karox is large and well shaped. In fact, you can get up to 588 litres of space, which is more than most rivals can muster. And there's 1,605 litres of room when you fold down those rear seats or a whopping 1,810 litres if you remove them all together. The Karok is very much a family car and happily rear seat passengers are well looked after. These two outer rear seats are well trimmed and shaped while even the middle rear seat is relatively wide. There is a bit of a hump in the floor though so you wouldn't want to be sitting there for a long journey. There's loads of leg room and loads of headroom provided you haven't gone for the optional panoramic sunroof. Best of all though is that SEL models and upwards get rear seats that can be reclined and slid back and forth individually and even removed altogether. Aside from a few scratchy plastics on the door cards and on the centre console, the interior is beautifully trimmed. The steering wheel feels expensive to touch as does the gear knob and this faux suede is rather classy. The flashes of chrome effect trim further the upmarket feel, but overall the whole thing feels a little bit restrained and sombre. Compare it with the wacky curves of a Peugeot 3008 interior and there's a lot less wow factor. It's all really logically laid out though, with physical buttons and knobs for the stereo, and we really, really like physical buttons for the air conditioning system. Much, much better than fussy, fiddly touchscreen menus. And the steering wheel, not only do we like the feel of it, but it has the visual balance of a three-spoke wheel, yet the space here means you can still see the instrument cluster when you turn the wheel. Visibility is good in other ways too. The thin windscreen pillars help give you a good view out with barely any blind spots and unlike many rivals, the Karok has relatively slim metal pillars at the rear, meaning your over-the-shoulder visibility is great too. And on the off chance you still need a little extra parking assistance, then all models come with rear parking sensors and if you go for SEL trim and above, you get front parking sensors and a rear view camera. Equipment levels are pretty generous, with even entry level cars getting dual zone climate control, cruise control and automatic lights and wipers, while this mid-spec SEL model gets those clever rear seats we mentioned earlier, plus selectable drive modes and 18 inch alloy wheels. What you don't get is a digital driver's display. You only get that when you upgrade to the higher spec infotainment system. Mind you, you don't feel like you're missing out because the regular dials are easy to read and classy looking. And there's a small screen in between the rev counter and the speedo that displays useful information. What we miss more is the absence of adaptive cruise controller standard. That's part of the travel assist option pack. On the road, the no-nonsense nature of the Karok continues to shine through. It is quiet, comfortable, composed and relaxing. It does everything that you ask it to do without any fuss or complaint. This 1.5 litre engine, for example, appears in an awful lot of products made by brands owned by the wider Volkswagen Group, which Skoda is part of. And we are almost always impressed, but it seems particularly well matched to the Karok, balancing a smooth engine sound with just enough power to ensure it never feels gutless. The six speed manual feels slick and the clutch feels light. Despite that, it manages to feed all the information that you need to know about biting points and that sort of thing. If you go for the seven-speed automatic, expect it to feel smoother and more responsive still. 
The ride too is smooth and compliant, but even so, there's not much body lean in the corners. A Ford Cougar is marginally more fun to drive, but a Karok is almost as good on twisty roads and is a little more comfortable overall. You can choose to spec it with adaptive suspension, but we wouldn't bother. It's also reasonably economical. Officially, you should be able to get around 43 miles per gallon, but we've managed around 36 miles per gallon in mixed driving. The entry level one litre petrol might be a teensy bit more economical and the two litre petrol model a little less. Mind you, you could get up to 59 miles per gallon from the diesel model. The Skoda Karok is by and large utterly brilliant. It provides sensible family transport for a reasonable price. It's fast enough, comfortable, reasonably engaging to drive. Okay, it's not that glamorous of designs, but we bet some obviously more fashionable cars are not quite as easy to live with and satisfying to own as the Skoda Karok. It's just a shame there's no electric or hybrid version on the price list. What do you think? Does it matter that you can't get a hybrid Karok? Would you have one anyway? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you're considering buying a Skoda Karok or indeed any car, head to cargurus.co.uk to find loads of cars for sale at top rated dealers. And using our super clever pricing technology, we'll even tell you whether it's a good deal or not.